let's take a look at how we can use these commands to write some programs. In our first example, we want Tracy to draw an asterisk from the center of our canvas. From now on, we should start our programs with a speed statement to make it easier for us to alter Tracy's movements as we test our code. So I'll write speed 5. In order to have Tracy draw one line of the asterisk, we're going to need to move her forward 100 and then backward 100 to return to the center. Let's see how that works. It's a good start, but we don't have any horizontal lines in our asterisk, so we need to turn Tracy before she starts drawing. We need the first line she draws to be 30 degrees from where she's facing, so let's add that in. That's better. Now we know a full rotation is 360 degrees, and our asterisk has six lines evenly spaced from the center, so let's divide 360 by 6, and we get 60 degrees for each turn. Let's write that in. Left. 60. Now we want her to go forward, backward, and turn again, and we're going to need to do this six times. What is this starting to sound like? A for loop. Let's write a for loop to repeat these commands six times for us. So I'm going to initialize my loop after I turn Tracy 30 degrees because I only want her to do that at the beginning, not every time the loop repeats. So I'll write for i in range 6 and indent the code beneath. Let's see how that works. Perfect! Let's look at a more advanced example now. In this challenge, we want Tracy to draw four circles that are centered on the canvas. We are going to have a lot of challenges that ask us to center our drawings, so it is important to take some time to plan exactly how we can make this happen. Our circles are going to have a radius of 50, and there is going to be one drawn in each quadrant of the canvas. It is important to remember that the radius is the distance from the center of a circle. The entire length of the circle is two times the radius or the diameter. It is also important to note that Tracy always draws circles starting from the bottom. In, so in order to have her draw the bottom left circle, we need to situate her here. This coordinate has an X value of negative 50 and a Y value of negative 100. Once Tracy draws this circle, we're going to want to move her forward to draw the next circle in the bottom right position. She's going to need to move forward 100 pixels, which is the diameter of each circle, to get to the bottom of the next circle. The last thing we need to make note of is where Tracy needs to move after she draws the bottom row of circles. Here's where she needs to be to draw the top row, which is at position negative 50, 0. Now we're ready to start coding. We know the starting position we want to move Tracy to, so let's first write pen up so she won't leave a trail, and then set position negative 50, negative 100. Once she gets there, we want her to draw two circles, and we know that she's going to draw two circles again on the top row, so let's use a for loop. For i in range 2, and indented beneath, I need to write my, my commands. So pen down, circle 50, pen up, and then circle forward 100. Let's see how that works. That's great. Tracy moves farther than the second circle, but that's okay because we have our set position command. Let's use that to get Tracy to the starting position for the top row. Set position negative 50, 0. And we want to make sure it's not indented because we don't want this command to be a part of our loop. Now we're ready to follow the same steps as before, so we can copy and paste this loop to use it again. Before we run this code, let's change our speed statement so Tracy runs through these commands faster. So I can use speed 10. Now let's run it. Awesome! Now it's your turn to use these new commands to solve Tracy exercises. 